So we're going to dive into some of your questions that you have about our new application that's coming soon, Bento. So we're going to answer them and uh, you can use the timestamps if you want to skip ahead to a certain question that is burning and on your mind. Um, and we're super excited to dive into today's video. So before we begin, if you do want early access to Bento, you can find the link in the description. You can sign up and you can either wait around for the launch or we will be emailing everyone out a beta invite if you would be very kind to help us out in helping us test the application before launch. I am super excited to release this, but also super nervous. So I'm glad this sort of Q&A came at a time where we can just sort of expand on some of the stuff that we've already talked about in that opening video. So for those who don't know, Bento is a new app we're launching and it's really helping you to do less. That's our mission. And um, what that essentially uh, consists of is a, a three task limit for your day uh, and using a methodology alongside it to help you focus. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in today's video, um, but I just wanted to bring up some great questions. There were some great questions posted by ZBS uh, on the YouTube comment, so a big thank you to them for posting that. Um, and a lot of these questions are really fantastic, so I'm looking forward to diving in. So the first one, is what is different about Bento compared to all of the other apps on the market? And that's a great question because I know there are so many apps on the market. Um, I review them. <laughs> um, and what is different? Well, Bento limits you, so you can only add up to three tasks uh, per day, and that's a large, a medium, a small one, much like a Bento box. And you can only add up to seven um, overall boxes. So we're limiting you, we're actually putting constraints, helping you to be a bit stronger on your prioritization method. There's also a method behind it, a framework that actually a lot of applications don't have um, and actually got born out of talking about this when we were sort of building it and it really did come into a process of its own. But that's helpful because a lot of applications sort of give you total free reign to just go in and use it and the great thing is the method's not actually that hard to learn, which is great because sometimes I don't want you anyone necessarily to read an aggressively long book to be able to get Bento. It actually probably can be consumed in less than five minutes to really understand it. And finally, it's a companion application, so it doesn't compete directly with a lot of productivity apps. It really just helps you to narrow down and focus what you're working on instead of necessarily fully replacing an app like Todoist. It's not that. <laughs> um, and hopefully we'll see that in the next couple of weeks when we're, we talk more about this. Next question is, are we neglecting Android? We are not. We're planning to release an Android version shortly after iOS. And the goal behind that is just to spread our releases uh, and make sure we cover um, sort of all the devices. So we're not neglecting it. We're just keeping an eye on it. Uh, but we are planning to launch an Android version, which is great news. Because there's so many people on Play Store I see in the comments that would love to ju get jumped in on Bento. So um, can I add more tasks? That's a great question. Um, you can't. Um, <laughs> well, you can, but you can't. It's a two-way question. Um, you can add um, more Bento boxes, but you have a limit of up to seven. The reason why we did that is so that you could plan potentially a full week of Bento boxes in advance. Um, you could also change that way that you structure it. You could do today, tomorrow's boxes, and then you could do your week, month, and yearly goals, and just keep refreshing them in terms of like, um, you know, upgrade, updating them and keeping them sort of maintained as you go. So once we sort of get this out, I think a lot of people are going to, we're going to see how people actually use this and really take note of how they've set up their boxes, hopefully giving people inspiration about how to use it as well. So can I still use my to-do list? Of course you can. Um, we don't necessarily want to compete with Todoist and uh, Notion and all of the other big boys. <laughs> um, the goal behind that is because there's a lot of new stuff in your backlogs. I'll probably still be using Sansama because you can't not neglect there's a lot of tasks on your list, but it's just refining what those tasks are for the day and giving yourself a bit more correlated focus. Um, so. I can imagine a to-do list would complement. This is why Bento complements a lot of applications uh, we sort of go along with. Audience target. Do we have an audience target yet? That's a good question. Um, we're sort of waiting till we see what happens. Um, I was reviewing an application the other day, um, time, time Timer, I think it was called, 
Um, and I was impressed because I didn't know what their market was. And actually, their market whilst was at work and people at home and, and children in education, there was actually a special needs market um, because um, the actual timer and the physical timer is really helpful for um, children and people um, with autism, which I didn't know about. So maybe once we launch it, there may be some um, sort of like wide variety of uses. So um, keeping that sort of um, a, a wide open spectrum for us. Okay, so are we going to release more productivity applications? Really dependent on whether Bento sort of grows and puts in our sort of what what happens. <laughs> um, you know, I've always wanted to create an application. I've said I've wanted to do a suite as well in the past, but let's just stick to releasing one app for now. Um, that would be really exciting just to get one app now. So does this reflect reflect um, or affect my my ability to review applications? Um, there's sort of two parts to that. Number one is yes, to some extent, because I now have an application that I can promote. Um, so I would, I'm would i gonna have to disclaim it every time I review a similar application, just to be clear, because I think it's important. And number two, I don't want to damage any of the way that I'm going about the process right now. So for example, I won't put Bento, say, head to head with another application unless I'm, say, explaining why the two are different. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily uh, flag one. I'd just say, which one is better for you? Um, and that's my approach on it. I, I really think um, it can sort of be promoted without necessarily it being like, for example, a good example is I won't even be including it in the top 10. I'll say, make it the sponsor of that video, maybe. <laughs> um, but it won't be in the top 10. Um, and it'll be clearly stated as do I do with most of the sponsorships, well, all of the sponsorships here on the channel. So what do workflows do? Now, workflows is something that um, in the in the method, um, it's actually quite useful. So as part of the method, um, you choose what tasks you want to do. You stick with three, but you narrow them down to large, medium, and small. Once you have those, you choose a workflow. And a workflow isn't anything complicated. It's actually the order you do them in. So do you want to start with the large one and go to the medium and go to the small? Or do you want to start with the small one, go to the medium and then to the large? Workflows are very simply an order process to help you to get working on that task. So will there be much customization inside the application itself? This is a great question. There is some gorgeous themes that we've been working on like absolutely stunning they're animated we're gonna have about three of them maybe four but they are beautiful um and i'm gonna tie that question in with will it have a dark mode it will however this might be part of the premium experience um we're still working that out however the dark mode versions are gorgeous honestly i'm really proud of what we've done with the application in terms of like making it to, to what it looks like it's really beautiful so a good question is, what inspired you to make Bento and why do you feel 2020 is the right year to release it? Yeah, again, like um, when we, we I sort of had a, an idea in the past of like, it, what if there was an app that limits it? There are sort of apps that do this, but not with a method. They're not naturally spiraled out of this. But I think 2020 is the year to release it, um, primarily because we've got it ready. <laughs> we might as well press launch. But at the same time, um, I feel like, Every app sort of does the everything. And at the same time, it could be a great companion app to actually help you do less. And I think that would be quite a cool concept. Um, so I think it's a very mindful application in a year where we might need mindfulness uh, a bit more with our tools. So will Bento allow different applications? Again, we're planning that a little later on, but we do have them all designed and ready. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> Um, if you could take a wild guess at where Bento will be in a mid-year of 2022, where do you think it will be? Well, I hope that we're fully out on iOS and Android, and we're also um, building releases that sort of make uh, improvements to it. We've already had an idea like a couple of months ago, and, uh, and developer Carl has already built it, templates. So it's really cool that we're able to sort of be quite close to the product. And um, I think what's key is the first three months is listening and working out what people think without necessarily destroying the methodology because the methodology is quite, okay, I'd say it's fairly nice. Um, and it's important to sort of weave that in versus just add more features. Um, so hopefully we can do that. So will Bento ever come to Windows PC? 
Not sure, but we're going to plan to release it on Mac. So I don't know. I'm not technical, but I think in, in eventually, I think it would be cool because I think the desktop experience is actually quite useful. Like I spend most of my applications when at work on the desktop. Whilst because it's a companion app at the moment, iOS and Android seem like a good place to start. And then we can move to those devices. So why did you settle for Bento and not a standard lunchbox? That's a great question. Um, I actually have a, like, I really like, um, I visited two countries, America and Israel. And I love those countries, like their sort of uh, whole like culture. And it really, I I've always loved since I was little, like the Japanese culture. And I just thought it'd be cool to make something um, related to that culture. And I think it's it's really like you can see that in the animations and the way that we've done uh, the application. So I, I think that's the way. I mean, I could do, I guess we could do uh, we could do a version like British Lunchbox and things like that. <laughs> um, we'll see. Uh, Bento and British Lunchbox coming to you soon. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's all the questions. Um, these are great questions. So thank you to all those who submitted them. Um, maybe um, obviously, like sometimes questions come from questions. Um, if I, questions come from answers. <laughs> So if you have any thoughts about what you, um, whether you have a question, we'll be doing another Q&A soon. Subscription is one of those things we're actually having a lot of conversations about at the moment. We originally were going to go with that upfront pricing. I think we're changing our mind on it and moving to subscription, but we're going to do it in a way that gives people at least a core experience of Bento. We'll explain it soon. And we did it only because it sort of makes sense long term because we were going to anyway. And it's like, do we just do it now while it's easier to set everything up and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but also to, to make more sense for sustainability as well with the application. Ooh, that was tiring. <laughs> that was tiring to get through all those questions. Thank you for all those who submitted them. And I'm excited to really dig a little bit deeper into the Bento concepts and method very soon. So I hope to see you guys very soon. And uh, let's chat uh, in the, the comments below. Thank you very much, guys. Cheerio. I'll make sure to sign up to the newsletter because that's the best place to get Bento when it's released. Cheers, guys.